Hello everyone, this is John Buck back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. On today's video we're going to continue discussing the Laplace transform and particularly Laplace transforms as we use them to think about block diagrams. So this is coming back to our discussion of block diagrams to implement linear time invariant systems from earlier in the semester. And you don't have to review that video before this one, but you might want to. I'll put the link in the description if you do want to go back and see the time domain story. And today we're going to talk about the frequency domain, and we'll see this is another of the advantages of Laplace transforms in general make it much easier to look at a block diagram and work out what the system function is or what the, uh, the differential equation is, and vice versa, much easier to get from a differential equation to a block diagram. Uh, and that's just part of the underlying theme of what Laplace transforms let us do. Right? The big win from Laplace transforms is they turn differential equations into algebra equations which makes things in general a whole lot easier. If you think in terms of a typical math curriculum, that says I'm finding an equivalent way to solve these problems that backs me up about six years in terms of the mathematical mechanics I need to do it. It's much easier to solve equations algebraically than it is to solve differential equations. That's why we teach algebra early in high school and why we differential equations sort of comes in the middle of a, a science, engineering, or math program. Uh, so that's one of the great advantages of Laplace's approach. All right, so if we're going to do block diagrams, remember back from our original time domain system, we had three elements. Right, we said any linear time invariant system implemented as a differential equation came down to basically three things we needed to do in time. And in this case, we're going to develop it with a parallel column and frequency where by frequency we mean Laplace, because Laplace is a kind of frequency representation. Right, so the first thing, well actually, you might want to pause the video and refresh your own memory to see if you can remember them, and then come back. Right, one of the first things we need to do is add two signals, right? So if we add two signals in time, what do we do to the Laplace transform? The Laplace transforms. Well, Laplace transform is linear, so we also add them. So that piece is the same in time and frequency. The second element we need, if you don't remember, is scaling. And scaling, I mean scaling by a constant. So if I put in x of t, I scale it by some gain a to get out y of t is a times x of t. So now let's think if I go to the frequency side, if I scale something by a constant in time, what do I do to its Laplace transform? Well, again, because the Laplace transform is linear, it's the same thing. So I put in x of s, and I get out y of s is a times x of s. Though I guess if I'm going to follow my convention, I should keep those blue. And then what was the, the third and final element we've had for our block diagrams? Let me move up a little bit so we have room for it. Right, we had to do, uh, in time domain, we said we did integrals. So we found there were reasons integrals are easier to build rather than differentiators. And, it ha and they're also kinder, or they're better when we have noise in the circuit to try to build things with integrators. And practically, the circuits we like to build or the mechanical systems we like to build with integrators make sense that way, or they're easier to implement. Uh, but it did mean it was a little complicated, and it was where block diagrams got tricky when we talked about them earlier this semester in the time domain, because we'd start with the differential equation and have to figure out how to solve the terms the right way and then do lots of integrals and, and keep the brackets nested the right way to figure out what got added to which after how many times it had been integrated. And this is where Laplace can make things a lot easier. If you remember from our Laplace transform table, what if I take an integral in time, what do I do to Laplace? Well, it's just a gain, although it's an S-dependent gain. So now this just becomes almost like another kind of gain box, except instead of a constant a, it does depend on the frequency s. So x of s goes in, and the output y of s is 1 over s times the input. So that's where that algebra part comes into to view, is that rather than needing to worry about how to group things, find the largest derivative, and take how many integrals I need to take, these just turn into multiplies by 1 over s. And so that are the three pieces I need to use to solve it. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to now... Uh, I think I'll stop this video here and, and keep them short. I'll do another video where I'm going to go from a differential equation to a block diagram, and then a third example where I'll start with a block diagram and get to the system function and the differential equation. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.